today we're going to look at four different ways to grow your own truffles, either in your garden or out in the wild. Whether you want to make some money or just do a fun experiment, this is an easy, affordable and scalable project for homesteaders, homeschoolers, hunters and people who are just curious. Spores are the key ingredient to growing truffles. These microscopic seeds are found in the hundreds of thousands in the flesh of mature truffles. Hunters, collect scraps of truffles over the season, freeze them or dry them and make sure you keep them away from light. These are my truffle scraps I've been collecting over the course of the Brumali season. If you're not a hunter, you can find spores and inoculum online, or else you can source a few low-grade, inexpensive truffles. You can also buy ready-to-plant truffle trees, but really, where's the fun in that? Now, it's possible to cultivate different species of European and US truffles, but you will need to check the best host tree for that species. The European black truffles, Brumale, Melanosporum and Estivum, grow on oak and hazelnut trees, among others. The European spring white truffle, that's the tube of Borghi, prefers pine trees. While in the US, the Oregon truffles grow with Douglas firs and the tuba Lyoni is found on pecan trees. I really like the idea of a dual crop, so we have chosen the native tuba Brumale and we're planting mainly hazel trees because, well, truffles and nuts. These nuts! Before I start, I'm preparing a spore mixture. These are my truffle scraps and I'm blending them with distilled water and fructose. I made this slurry in a previous video, so I will leave the link to that below, along with the full recipe. I'm making two mixtures this time, this water solution, and this is the slurry. I've added vermiculite to this, which absorbs most of the liquid. Here's my slurry, and here's my solution. Now I'll keep these in the fridge until I need them. Choose acorns, pecans or hazelnuts for this truffle tree method. Collect your nuts in autumn and test them first by placing them in a bowl of water. You're going to use the nuts that sink. The soil that you use throughout this project needs to have a pH of over 7.5. And of course you need to add a spoonful of the spore mixture. Water them, but don't drown them. And keep them in a warm light place. The second method, the potted plant method, is quicker than the first, although nothing is quick exactly when it comes to growing truffles. Now, you can start with this method in spring. I have a small oak here, about 12 months old, which I found in the forest. Potting this in a container like this allows me to control the environment. I'm introducing the spore mixture. Now, as the spores germinate, they produce mycelia. These are thin threads which will grow towards the roots of a host tree. In this case, our little oak. The relationship between the mycelia and roots is vital for truffles to form. Hopefully next year this will be ready to go into the land with our other trees. Now, while we are mainly growing hazel trees, we don't want to create a monoculture. We're aiming for a diverse truffle ecosystem, similar to what would occur in nature. So that means we're also planting oak and hornbeam, lime and a few pines. This is the third method, uh, transplantation. On our own land, for the most part, we have transplanted older saplings, two or three years old. These are like hazel whips. This does save time, but there may be a trade-off as older trees might not host the mycelia as readily as the younger ones. However, studies show that it can be done, and it's worked for us so far with a 66% success rate by year five, which I'm very happy with. If possible, try to use saplings from established truffle areas, or maybe even you can get your hands on some hazel whips from truffle farms. 
there's a chance that these trees may already be infected with the truffle mycelium. If you are serious about this project, then it's worth getting soil analysis done. Universities and private companies will offer this service and it'll give you valuable insights into your soil health and overall suitability. These trees were planted just over a month ago. Some of the saplings that we transplanted, like this one, have come on really well. Although, obviously, we've no idea what's going on under the ground. When we planted these, I put a handful of slurry into the soil along with the sapling. So today I'm going to be re-inoculating these trees that we planted just over a month ago. All right, here's my solution that I made the other day. I'm just going to dilute it. Make a good shake. Next to the tree, I'm going to gently rake the earth. This is my solution, and that's about half a litre, which is going into five litres, which will do me for ten plants. Sprinkle the solution. Then we'll just rake back over the ground and let gravity do the rest of the work. For this fourth part, we are out in the wild to try and promote truffle growth in the forest. Truffles are in decline at the moment, and this is a very worrying issue, not just for us truffle hunters. Truffles are a vital component of a healthy forest, and any reduction in truffle populations can have a disastrous knock-on effect on other plant and animal species. Hunters spend a lot of time in the forests and could make a significant contribution to the preservation of these vital ecosystems. When you're spreading this mixture out in the wild, choose suitable sites, places where truffles have died out, or sites which seem to have all the necessary growth factors but no truffles. Okay. Or you might want to spread the spores in places where you hunt already. Spreading spores and promoting truffle growth helps preserve the biodiversity, soil health and ecosystem resilience. And you might even have more truffles next year, or at least one of your rivals will. So you'll have done him a good turn. There's a lot of scientific research which is being carried out to help truffle cultivation and to help truffle growers. And a great deal is still being discovered about all the different species of truffles. Whether we take this knowledge and apply it to truffles in the wild is really down to us. There are already so many issues in the world today. We already have enough to contend with without all of these warnings, which can just make us feel overwhelmed. However, by focusing on small manageable actions, for example, planting trees, we regain a sense of agency and this can alleviate that sense of overwhelm or helplessness. Taking these small steps can have a meaningful impact and it will also contribute to our own sense of empowerment and connection and well-being. So yeah, give it a try.